Hi, my name is Indy. Welcome to British Path A. Today's top list is the top flying aces of all time, and I'm going to say straight off the bat that the Red Baron is not number one, so keep watching. So what actually is a flying ace? Well, it's a pilot during a war that shot down multiple enemy planes in aerial combat. The minimum number to become ace is usually considered to be five. When we think of flying aces, we most often think of the First World War, but there were aces in several other wars as well, most prominently the Second World War and the Korean War, and they even included pilots who flew jet planes, not just those early ones made of chicken wire and wax paper. There's a lot of romance attached to flying aces, and it's easy to see why. Just imagine what you're actually doing when you engage in a dogfight with another pilot, especially in the early days when many pilots didn't have much training at all. Here are the five greatest. Number five, Edward Manick. This British World War I ace is today credited with 61 kills, though some claim as many as 73 for him. Like most World War I fighter pilots, his career was brief. He became an ace in July 1917 and was himself shot down by ground fire in July 1918, being found 250 meters from his plane wreck, having apparently jumped out of the plane to try to survive the crash. Now, Manick was unusual in that he was 29 when he began flying, and he also had vision problems. It's claimed by many people that he was even blind in one eye. Number four, Billy Bishop, Canadian ace. Bishop began flying combat missions in 1917, at a time when the Germans were shooting down British planes five to one, and the average life expectancy in Bishop's squadron was 11 days. But he took to dogfights like a duck to water, and at one point shot down 25 enemy planes in only 12 days, and his total of 72 kills makes him the top Canadian ace of all time. Number three, René Fonck. Another ace from the First World War, this Frenchman was the top scoring ace for all of the Allies in the war, with 75 confirmed kills, but 142 claimed. Twice, Funk shot down six planes in a single day, and his great advantage was that not only was he a pilot, he was an excellent marksman. Now, Funk was easily the most successful pilot to survive the war. The most successful pilot to not survive World War I was... Number two, Baron Manfred von Richthofen, the Red Baron. The Red Baron is without a doubt the most famous flying ace ever, and possibly the most famous pilot of any sort of plane. Almost just as well known was the Fokker triplane that he often flew. Richthofen is credited with 81 kills, the highest official total of the war, reaching that total by April 1918. On the 21st of that month, however, while flying over the trenches at the Somme, Richthofen was killed by a single bullet to the chest, probably ground fire from a British soldier. He managed to land his plane in enemy territory and died in the cockpit. According to one eyewitness, his last word was kaput. Richthofen might have been the greatest ace of World War I, but he was not the greatest ace of all time, though. That honor belongs to another German. Number one, Eric Hartmann. Hartmann flew with the Luftwaffe in World War II on the Eastern Front and shot down, are you ready for this, 352 enemy aircraft. He flew his first mission at the age of 20 in October 1942, and his final one on May 8, 1945, the last day of the war in Europe. In between those days, he flew 1,404 combat missions, and though he was forced to land 14 times by either mechanical failure or damage to his plane from parts of aircraft that he had shot, he was never shot down and he was never injured in 1,400 missions. So there you have it. Eric Hartman, the greatest flying ace of all time, and his four runners-up. That's it for today. We'll see you next week for another top list. Click here to see last week's.